how old is Sue? Sixteen. Two years old. This week on Kentucky Field, wildlife management areas offer a ton of opportunity. <laughs> and we're on Green River taking advantage of a great one. There we go. Next. We've got over a month until deer season closes, and that means there's still plenty of time for you to donate to Hunters for the Hungry. We'll show you how it's done. Then, another public land hunting opportunity. This time, pheasant and quail. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plumb loaded with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> first St. Leo. Yes! Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. If you love the excitement of hunting with dogs, you're gonna love this week's show. And up first, we're headed to Green River WMA in search of squirrels. Well, Jeremy, we've been talking about doing this for a long time. People are used to seeing you on, giving us all of our law enforcement information, but what they don't know is that you're an avid hunter. Oh, I love to hunt. Deer, turkey, squirrels, small game. We're right down the street from, uh, from the area that you patrol, and uh, here on WMA, we're on Green River WMA, and you've got a squirrel dog with you today. I do. Well, let's, let's meet your dog. Okay. So how old is Sue? Sue's two. Two years old. So have you had this dog since he was a pup? We have. We got him when he was about eight months old. Well, I know you and your son have been hunting for years mm -hmm. and years together. So when he was a little kid, did you think he uh, was going to become the captain here, conservation officer? I, I didn't know he'd be captain, but that's all he ever wanted to do, I think, from the time he was real small. You just hunt squirrels and squirrels only with this dog? Right? That's it. Yeah. That's all. That's all he hunts. You, you get out and you hunt one time behind a squirrel dog, you, you'll, you'll definitely want to get you a squirrel dog. Oh, it's, it's so much fun. <laughs> Do you think he's treating? Oh, he's treating. <laughs> he's treating. <laughs> he's ready. Well, we better, we better uh, get, get rolling. <laughs> hey, Dad. Hey, Dad, if you'll keep walking around, we see it, we're just trying to get it to move. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. We need a shotgun, don't we? <laughs> There's a nest right there he's trying to get to. Got him. He's coming down. He's laid back and hung up. There you go. There we go. Nice job. I'll tell you what, that, uh, that, that squirrel there uh, poses a challenge. With all the leaves, and he was pretty nervous when we came in. Oh, he started yeah. moving. Yeah. And there's the. Second one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so the one was shot and hung up in a vine. And, and we saw a second squirrel thinking it was the first one. That's exactly right. We got two and uh, we got plenty to go. Yes, nice sir. Good job. Good work. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> this is an awesome place to, to bow hunt. I, I don't take advantage of it like I should. It's a beautiful wildlife management area, I'll tell you that. It's right up here. I think he hit it that time. Oh, he ain't dead. He's on the move.
There you go. Oh, perfect amount of lead on that dog to keep him off there. Nice shot, Mr. McQuarrie. Oh, Gray. Nice job. Super treat, we came over and saw it then, but we need your dad to come in and shoot it out. We had to finish it out for us, dude. We had to call in help. <laughs> we had to have backup. He got it, Good though. shot, Ned. Nice job. You know, they say it on hunting with you with the conservation officer. It can be fun, can it? Oh, yeah. It's a lot, we have a lot of fun. You can tell he's got a passion for it. I mean, he, he, you know, the way he handles the dog. And mm -hmm. just watching him go through the woods today, he, he's making future trips. He's planning future trips and thinking oh, yeah. about deer setups. And, right. You know, that's what it takes to be a good a good game officer. You I think have so. To, you have to know what what's what's a hunter going to be out here looking for. What, where are they going to yeah. want to set up? And you know, and you, most of our conservation officers, matter of fact, I don't know any that don't hunt. Yeah. They, they all want to spend time outdoors. That's why they became a conservation right. officer. Got him. That's a sale. One. Get our game bag in within our game bag out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep things from getting so messy anyway. Yeah, we're, there you go. Good job. It's been pretty fast paced as far as treating yeah, goes. Oh my God. I, I, I will bet my boat that when you turn her loose within three minutes, she's treed. <laughs> it's going to happen again, huh? <laughs> Good job, buddy. Good job. Tell me a little bit about how these dogs hunt differently uh, than the, the difference mostly between this dog, the Mountain Cur, and, and the Feist is. Feist are most of the time going to use their eyes. They're going to focus mainly on tree and squirrels mm -hmm. by sight. And Soup, like I said, he's an original mountain cur. He'll use his eyes some, but it's mainly going to be his nose. Okay. Better reload, huh? Get ready. I think so. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, go ahead, buddy. If you got a good shot. I can't mm -hmm. find his head. Right. He is little. Oh, you me to. Yeah, you got him. Uh oh, he's starting to run. Yeah, he's on the other side of the street. There he comes. Nice shot. That's teamwork. This is something you can do by yourself, but it's a lot more fun when you got somebody to talk to and carry on with. And a lot of times, it takes someone running around the tree to get a good, clear it, shot. It truly is what you said. It does take teamwork with the dog. And the hunters. Yeah, exactly. I'm here today with Major Shane Carrier with our Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Law Enforcement Division. Law enforcement agencies across the nation are using more and more technology to help you guys do your job. That's absolutely correct, Chad. We are seeing a tremendous influx in, in technology in law enforcement in several different aspects of it. Every good case starts with a tip, doesn't it? It starts with a tip. We're not unlike any other police agency. We rely heavily on the public to provide us with information. So you guys have now launched an app that can be picked up on either Android or on Apple devices. It can. And it allows people to immediately essentially take a picture and upload it as a tip. That's correct. Our KFW Law app is available, like you said, on the Apple Store or the Android devices. Almost everybody has a cell phone anymore, so if they will download that app, what that gives them the capability to do is immediately share information with us in a quick, concise manner. It's very user-friendly. It gives them the option to enter their location, any text information they want to uh, describe to us about the tip, and also a short video or even photo about what they're seeing. And the person can remain anonymous. It is completely anonymous. And uh, that's the one factor that we have seen is a burden sometimes about gaining information that sometimes mm -hmm. people are really hesitant to get involved. Mm -hmm. And that's understandable. So we wanted this app to be completely anonymous. Any information that is transmitted to us from the phone user is encrypted. Mm -hmm. So we have absolutely no idea who is sending the information unless they want to voluntarily include that information in the text portion of it. So since this is anonymous, I'm sure you need them to provide you quite a bit of information. We do, it's completely anonymous, so as much information as they could provide us, especially location. What else do we need to know about the app? For one, the app is not monitored 24 seven. So if the person needs immediate assistance from a law enforcement officer or immediate response, I still would want them to call 911 or 1-800-25-ALERT the app is good for sending us information that we can use to build a case on in the future. So if they needed immediate assistance, the app's not for that. 
If you want to download the app, it's free. You mm -hmm. go on your, your marketplace. Yep. And what's it called again? KFW Law. Okay. It's all one word. You can search KFW Law and it'll pop up and you can download that app for free to your smartphone. Well, thank you for coming on and talking to thank us you. about it today and good luck pleasure. with it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hunters for the Hungry is an organization that's been putting meals on the tables of many people here in the Commonwealth. If you're lucky enough to take an extra deer this year, maybe you should consider a donation. We set up this morning on this on this field knowing that there were a lot of deer in here. What we couldn't tell is this, this field. It's got a little bit of a ridge line in the dead middle. It caused us some issues because as we sat down here, we really couldn't tell how many deer were moving across from us. We sat here until about nine o'clock. Finally decided to stand up and look. Literally saw a deer coming through, could only see its head. And as it walked up on this backstop across from us, we were able to get a shot. There were two of them. The second one ran back and stopped. I'm excited, I'm gonna donate these deer to Hunters for the Hungry. You know, the holidays are right around the corner. And these stay right here in our local community, so we don't want anyone to go hungry throughout Thanksgiving and Christmas, so we're gonna get these donated. Let's go check out what we got. All right, looks like we've got a medium-sized doe here. This is a, gonna be a perfect size, really good eating for hopefully several needy families right here in the uh, Kentucky Louisville communities. I'm really excited about giving this deer to Hunters for the Hungry. I've made a donation each of the last couple years and this is gonna be absolutely perfect for what I was wanting today. bit about how the process with Hunters for the Hungry works. Okay, so a hunter takes illegally, harvest a deer, they get the confirmation number, of course, bring it into a, a processor. We always recommend that they call a processor first to make sure that one, if it's early season, that they're taking deer mm -hmm. at this time. And then two, that they haven't met their quota yet. Mm -hmm. We give each processor a quota for the year mm -hmm. and uh, they work up to that number. So call before you take your deer. So here with Joe Long. Joe, you've been uh, working with Hunters for Hunger for quite some time now. Uh, yes, we have, Chad. Uh, probably at least six or seven years now. So you get an allotment and you process deer, and who picks up those deer for, from you guys? Local food banks uh, like Dare to Care. Okay. And you provide everything in the ground form, right? Uh, yes. When a deer comes in, we will thoroughly inspect it to make sure that it's uh, fit for someone to eat. I know Kentucky Hunters for the Hungry only choose select processors that they've been recommended. Yes. So, and you guys, when a deer comes in, if it, if it doesn't look like something's right, you just say no. Then right. they go, well, I, then just donate to Hunters of the Hungry. What's your next response gonna be? Uh, that it's not fit to eat and that uh, we'll, we'll dispose of it for you. How big is this program? Last year, we did uh, 1,468 deer, which, uh, a deer, a deer will give us about 40 pounds of ground venison, mm -hmm. and from that 40 pounds of ground venison, uh, it'll feed uh, about 200 meals. So that's over 300,000 meals right so there. If we start doing the, the quickly doing the math here, you're talking about two, 2,000 deer, and you're looking at 200 meals. We're talking 400,000 meals. Right, that's my goal for this year. Is, in the state of Kentucky, the, state of Kentucky. the hunters are gonna provide through donations of, of, their, of, their, of their harvest. Right, it's a win-win for everybody. It's a win for the farmers because if they've got depredation permits, mm -hmm. we can take them. Mm -hmm. uh, zone one counties are you know, they're wanting to get the deer off of there, zone two as well. Mm -hmm. So if we can get these extra deer that's, you know, that's causing damage, why not put them to good use? If you're a hunter and you go, you know what, I, I wanna help out this program. There's a couple ways you can do it. First off, you can make a financial contribution, right? Right, right off our website. Right off the website, and that will help pay a processor to process another deer. Right. Two, you can take a legally harvested deer and reach out to a processor and drop it off. Right. 
And is there any other ways they can help out? Yes, well, they can actually pay for the processing if they want to. Okay. But typically, uh, that's what our organization does is pay for the processing. Okay. So. And you guys partner with the Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, as well as some other organizations to help raise funds for this, right? Right. Department of Fish and Wildlife, of course, uh, Kentucky Farm Bureau, Feeding Kentucky. We have a lot of partners, a lot of sportsmen's clubs, uh, a lot of individuals that help. It's, it's a fantastic program. I appreciate all your oh, thank help you. and, and for coming in and explaining the program to us. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. If you're a bird hunter, you may want to check out one of our quota hunts on our WMAs for pheasant or quail. We're at Clayton WMA here today on the Upland quail quota hunt. We're in the back of the property towards the river on the upper unit. Right now we're hunting in a native grass field, trying to find either quail or possibly a grouse. If the weather would stay like this all day, we'd be in good shape. This is prime time. Birds ought to be feeding right about now. How big is this WMA again? It's uh, somewhat around 9,000 acres. Okay, and uh, what percentage open land? 20% open, 80% forested. Come on, dogs. Come on, Willie. Hey, down here. Down this way. I'm Jacob Stewart. I'm the manager here at Clay WMA, and hunting with me today is uh, Ben Robertson, our assistant director for the Wildlife Division, and Zach Danks, our grouse and turkey coordinator. Here! Come on! I want y'all to picture something right here. There's a hunter who came around and his dog was pointed right there by that tree. Oh, he's holding tight. It was beautiful. Hunter comes around behind him, pushes the bird about, I don't know, 10 yards away. Boom, boom! Bird flies off. It was terrible. I mean, you remember that, Zach? You remember that, Zach? Do we know that, Hunter? You're talking. You remember that, Zach? Fabrication. You remember that, Zach? Total fabrication. <laughs> Quail hunt? No, pheasant hunt. Pheasant flies, lands in a tree across the road. Boom! Somebody else shoots the bird. <laughs> Thanks for uh, pointing that out. No, don't worry. I've shot at so few wild quail this year when we do get some up. Yeah, you may not remember what to do. I'm probably going to be about 10 feet behind them. <laughs> <laughs> the upper quota hunt has 12 units, three hunters per party. I see some hunters way over on that other top of that hill way over there. Oh, I got you now, I see him. Okay, we got them both pointed. No, Willie, no, Willie. Good boy, Blue, good boy. So we're, what, a week past the uh, pheasant hunt on this WMA? The pheasant hunt is a put and take hunt that we have here at Clay WMA. Uh, we've been doing it for oh, somewhere around 17 years uh, for the opportunity for people to hunt. We put out oh, 420 birds and have uh, 70 hunters for three days come out and shoot. Rooster! We're in the cleanup period from now to the end of the year and we've gotten up two or three on this quail quota hunt. That was a beautiful rooster. We're put forth with uh, the mission to manage the habitat on here and make it suitable for uh, good hunting opportunities for the public uh, to come and enjoy themselves and uh, hopefully encounter game and have a good enjoyable hunt. This is a pretty grousey little edge it looks like. I can see grouse being in there. This is one of the annual food plots. It's Milo that they plant and uh, they're not always the best places to hunt honestly. The bigger value for quail management is the ground disturbance. So Jacob will come in here and he'll plant this this year, but he'll leave it alone for a year or two. And a lot of just natural plants will come back and get a lot of ragweeds, desmodium, the little stick tights that stick to your hunting pants. Uh, that's the stuff that quail really love. So the bigger benefits are gonna probably come next year when this starts to come back. I think we should probably keep going straight ahead here and hit that creek. Hey, look for Blue up there. He says he's on point in front of you. He's in front of me. Is he pointing? Yep. 
Not sure there's any birds in here though. Sure was, covey. Quail? Yeah, here's a quail, here's a covey. Wasn't expecting that. Blue nailed them and Lucy had her head up like this, but she's so tired, she, I didn't give her enough credit. And they, uh, Do we need to come over there and chase them? Yeah, we probably should. How many were there? Um, I'd say there was at least 10 birds. Next year, we won't have a quota hunt. Uh, next year, the Clay WMA is gonna be open to grouse and quail two days a week, Mondays and Saturdays. Easy, dog. That's where they went, Zach. Look in the hunting guide to make sure everything goes through. But as of right now, the commission has passed that to allow more opportunity for hunting. It's like they're held tight. They sure did. This is probably where the birds have been all day is in this woody cover. Because we haven't been finding them in the grass. A lot of times people overlook this stuff, they don't hunt in here. You're looking at 16 days worth of, worth of being able to come here and chase some, yeah. some quail on grass. By stopping December 31st, we're, you know, we're cutting it off when winter will get severe and hawk migration, that kind of thing. You're gonna have a lot of birds just taken naturally. So it's, uh, it's why we're trying to be conservative on an area that really focuses on management. Is, is that right? Yeah, because this is a both a quail and a grouse focal area. So uh, it is important that we, you know, uh, try not to make uh, hunting pressure additive. I mean, these are, it's like grouse hunting in here. You shoot a tree every time you're shooting at a bird. Good boy. I'd say though people probably don't want to emulate our kind of hunting pressure. I <laughs> know, our, our hunting pressure is, yeah, uh, yeah. is no, uh, is not really pressure at all. Nah, we just keep, keep, keep the birds exercising though. Okay, we got them both pointed, 50 yards. This way? Yeah, toward that tall both tree. Both them pointed? Both of them. Easy, Willie, easy. They're both pointing your way. Easy, Willie. Whoa. 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 There they go. Dang. Good Lord, look at them climb. Look at them. They're still climbing. <gasps> okay. Wow, good dog. Good dog. That was a nice cover right sure there. It sure was. Wow, oh, Kylie. man, there was a bunch of birds in there. Wow. Kyle, that was pretty. I just, it was so far out and it was in there. I, there was no way I was gonna be able to pick out a bird. Oh, it's just, I mean, look where they are, right here on the edge. Rank native grasses, blackberry briars, and into the woods, across the draw. Ain't this fun? Oh, man, it's a, it's a blast. Uh, there's nothing better than a day behind a bird dog and uh, just watch them work. We sure have fun with it. Oh, we, we sure work do. hard. Yeah. This is just uh, one of those days you look forward to all year. All year. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have Drew Tucker with his very first fish ever caught at Rough River Lake. Something tells me it won't be his last. Congratulations. Here's a really nice buck that was taken by a crossbow by Sammy Brewington. And this deer was taken in Barron County. Nice job. Here we have Ashlyn back hunting with her dad, Matt. They took this nice doe from Anderson County. Congratulations. Four-year-old Jackson Lee Barnes is probably hooked forever now that he's caught his first bass that was taken in Henry County. Nice job. Here we have a really nice buck taken by Andrew Beeman. This is a nice buck that was killed on his Pawpaw's farm in Brookville, Indiana. Congratulations. Here we have Drake Robichere. He's holding his very first trout ever. Congratulations. Check out this beautiful bull elk that was taken by Jimmy Elgood. This bull was taken in Perry County in the second week of bull firearm season. Nice job. Here we have a really nice bass that was caught by 11 year old Luke Parker in a private pond in Russell County. Congratulations. Here we have 10 year old Eli Harris who bagged his very first squirrel using a 410 shotgun. This squirrel was taken in his Papaw David's woods. Nice job. Check out this really nice 15 pound catfish that was caught by Hunter Collier at Charlie Cook Lake. Congratulations. Tis the season to be around your family. 
and make sure you make time to be outdoors. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. Soon, you'll use this to swat flies, swat skeeters, or maybe some old dog. Meanwhile, it looks good just waiting. See all the Kentucky Afield stuff at the Kentucky Afield store.